Hi guys, this is Peter and welcome back to the Gizgai channel. Today, I'm sharing my thoughts on the Vivo X70 5G after more than 6 months of use. This is honestly one of my two personal phones and a favorite to recommend in the sub-35,000 price range. So if you want to know more about it, then just keep on watching. Similar to its predecessors, this device feels and looks premium. It has a metal frame and a 3D curved matte fluoride AG glass back that absolutely feels smooth and comfortable to hold. It gives a mineral or sandstone effect which makes this cosmic black color not so typical looking. Add that to its slim build which makes it comfortable to bring and sleep in the pockets. I also like that it doesn't attract a lot of fingerprint smudges. Then of course, you will see a Zeiss branding here while the Vivo label is placed on the bottom part as usual. There's nothing on the left side, while on the right there's the power key with an embossed middle part as an indicator that it is the power key along with the volume rocker. Unlike its Pro Plus sibling in China, the X17PH doesn't have an IP rating for water and dust resistance. Fortunately, it would still be protected against accidental water splashes since it has a blue-colored rubber seal found in the SIM card tray suggesting that it has some sort of protection against casual water splashes. Well, it would be nice to have an official IP rating on its future releases. Meanwhile, the display also has a layer of thought sensation up protection and a pre installed screen protector for additional shielding. It also has a top center punch hole with slim bezels that resulted in a high screen to body ratio. Still at the back on the upper left corner is its protruding triple camera module that resembles the higher pro model. The top has a slightly different texture. From there, you will see the professional photography text in gold, a microphone hole, and an IR blaster allowing its users to use the handset as a remote control. Below, you will find a dual nano SIM tray slot, another microphone hole, USB-C port, and the speaker grill. I also like to note that the top and bottom frame have black builds so the phone can basically stand on its own. In general, this is a very well-crafted device that looks and feels good in the hands. Checking out the display, the Vivo X70 features a 6.56-inch FHD Plus AMOLED E5 screen which is one of the most balanced colors in an AMOLED panel. It is complemented with a smooth 120Hz refresh rate and an HDR10 Plus support. In case you are wondering, this is a similar display that the brand used for its predecessor, the X60. To be fair though, it doesn't seem to need an upgrade anyway. But we will be more than glad if they will improve it further on future releases. Anyway, this display sure doesn't disappoint. This is great for streaming videos and playing games with very good colors and inky blacks. You can also expect good viewing angles and a viewable display under direct sunlight when setting the brightness to the max. In the display settings, you can switch the refresh rate to the high 120Hz, the standard 60Hz, or on smart switch so it will automatically select the best refresh rate for an app without consuming too much battery life. In our case, I just like to keep it at standard. Then of course, you can turn on the system-wide dark mode as well as the eye protection to filter out blue light. Audio-wise, its down-firing speaker produces good enough sound reproduction that can fill up a small room. The quality is at par with mid-range smartphones today with almost unnoticeable bass. While the Vivo X70 has good speakers, hopefully they can include stereo speakers on its upgrade this year. Unfortunately, unlike other Vivo premium phones in the past, this has no hi-fi audio support for wired headphones. For recordings and calls, it is above average and works just fine for the price. When it comes to cameras, Vivo used a smaller 40MP lens with laser AF than a 48MP camera like the X60. But remember, megapixels is not everything. This is actually a custom Sony sensor designed for Vivo only, plus it has a Zeiss T-Star coating to minimize the effect of flares, stray light, and ghosting. It also has the ultra-sensing gimbal camera for stable photos and videos. This has been a good deal for both Vivo and Zeiss and we are hoping that they'd keep this partnership for the next XX series. This is also assisted by a pair of 12MP sensors for both ultra-wide and portrait shots. Plus, it goes with a color temperature sensor and a xenon flash. On paper, this setup is promising and it did prove itself well as seen on most photos that we took in Baguio despite the cloudy weather. When using the standard mode, we often get crisp and clear shots with natural looking colors even when the AI is turned on. 
The colors can be punchy at times, but don't go overboard in my opinion. Weirdly, we also discovered that it can take shots with starburst effect on point and shoot. Normally, you can only take those shots on a mirrorless camera if your lens has aperture blades. We don't know how Vivo made it possible on a tiny camera system like this. Software enhancement, maybe? Anyways, ultra-wide photos on the other hand provide great details and vibe, but there are shots when you will notice a fisheye effect. One of our favorite features to play around is the portrait mode that shows flagship level outputs. The subject of background separation often looks clean and almost professional looking, thus you can even adjust the bokeh effect in post. Another thing we appreciate is its macro capabilities. Although it doesn't have a dedicated macro mode, it honestly does a very good job on focusing closely when using the main camera. Meanwhile, the night photography can be a hit or miss. Some can look noisy, but most of the time we get sharp and well lit takes even with the ultra-wide mode. For selfies, it is okay. It isn't as special as this back camera system, but it produces passable images most of the time. Also tried it for taking videos, and we enjoyed using its ultra steady mode at 1080p. It does, however, get a large crop when shooting, and meticulously speaking, gimbal can still be improved. When shooting in 1080p, you will also quickly toggle the lens to ultra wide and 2x zoom. Then, when using in 4K settings, you only get the zoom options. Feature you might like is the bokeh effect for videos. This one creates a more cinematic effect. Effect, but do take note that it is not available with the ultra steady mode. Okay, now let's talk about the performance. Powering the X70 is a 6 nanometer MediaTek Dimensity 1200 octa-core processor together with a Mali G77 MC9 GPU and 12 gigs of RAM with an expandable 4 gigs virtual RAM that you can turn on in the settings. As an everyday device, the X70 is more than enough for your casual social media scrolling, video streaming, messaging, and calling. It can handle multitasking flawlessly and smoothly with its 120Hz refresh rate on board. For gaming, you can play games like the Genshin Impact and Mobile Legends under low to high graphics settings, but setting it to ultra sometimes shows stutters. It gets warms on heavy games for continuous hours, but not to an alarming level. For storage, the unit we have has 256 gigs, and there's no option for an expansion via microSD card. We ran it through our standard benchmark test, and here are the scores we got. Talking about connectivity, besides the advantage of having 5G, it's also complete with dual SIM 4G LTE, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, GPS, screencast, NFC, and nicely an IR blaster remote control. The IR blaster could be used to control some of your home appliances like TVs, aircons, and etc. All of them works quite well. Just note that Wi-Fi and 5G speeds depend on signal strength and many other factors. At the lower part of the screen is the in-display fingerprint scanner. It works pretty snappy and we have no complaints about it, except that its placement can get some getting used to, since it is placed on the way lower part of the screen like most smartphones today. It also has a face unlock tech that works even in the dark. In terms of battery life, keeping the Vivo X70 running is a 4400mAh capacity with 44 watts fast charging. Surprisingly, this phone provides long battery life, which can last up to 2 days on casual use and almost a whole day if you are a heavy user. In our PC Mark Work 3.0 battery life benchmark, with the 120Hz refresh rate turned on, it managed a good 11 hours and 45 minutes. By default, it can last for 15 hours and 20 minutes. As for charging, its 44 watts charger can juice up the device from 0 to 100% in less than 50 minutes. Crawling through, Vivo's improved OneTouch OS 12 looks fun and highly customizable. It's loaded with personalization options, a number of bloatware, and pre-installed apps that you can uninstall if you like. Either way, it's pretty easy to navigate and get a hang off. There are also multitasking features that you can take advantage of, such as screen split, smart motion, one-handed mode, phone clone, and app clone. At 34,899 pesos, the Vivo X70 stood the test of time as it is still solid even after 6 months of use. It may not be over the top as its higher pro siblings, but it's a straight up well-rounded premium device with stellar cameras, excellent 5G performance, long battery life, and a sleek classy design. Of course, its use of size optics made it a real steal and we still highly recommend this for those who love shooting photos and videos on the go often. The device that made us even more exciting about the future of Vivo in the premium smartphone market. That's it everyone. Again, this is Peter of Gizguy.com. Please like and subscribe and stay safe always. Bye-bye.